All right, welcome to MZBC, the podcast pilot episode edition with Mike Reagan, Russell Naquin, Pastor Russell. Pastor Russell. Teacher Mike, what's your title? Mike. Just Mike? You know, somebody's <laughs> mad at me. You get different names. Yeah, of course. Uh, so me and Mike, if you've seen us do anything before, we wanted to come together and uh, do the podcast because we only have about 30 minutes on uh, Wednesday nights to do our Wednesday online worship. And there's a lot of times where we could talk for an hour. And so we thought, if God's called us to do this, then we should do it, uh, you know, in a way that, that one, we're comfortable with doing, and two, that more people can listen to it whenever they want to or uh, download it and just, you know, get into it however they want to. So, more later. Yeah. In real life. Us talking, we were wondering on our first bill here, because we've been working on this for months. Yeah. Months to get together and I got busy or he got busy or no internet or no video. Yeah. There's always something. It's harder than you think just to jump up yeah, and do one of these things. Like, yeah, let's record, you know, <laughs> click the camera on and go for it. Yeah. So our first one, we're going to get So what's done. the, so if you had to say with the, the application part, right? That's what we're doing, life application. Like how do we apply it to our life? I think, uh, so this being our first one, if this is the first time you've ever uh, listen to Mike and uh, me and Mike, then who are we? Like, where do we come from? What's going on? Uh, I'll start, then I'll, and I'll let Mike share about himself. But um, so my story is I was born in Fairhope, Alabama. Um, lived there until oh, kindergarten. Show. Yeah, roll tide. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Fairhope, Alabama, we lived there only until I was like in kindergarten. And then we moved to Pensacola, Florida. So that was my hometown all the way through high school. Um, Scambia High School. Graduated in 1995 and uh, didn't have a plan or, or any kind of, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, as typical teenagers do, a friend to me and two other friends, we rented a house. And uh, as 18 and 19 year old kids, which I don't know who that realtor was, but she probably got fired after renting us a house. Uh, so we just hung out. It was a lot of hanging out. My very first job, real job, I guess I got a paycheck, was working at Alvin's Island uh, on the beach. So we what sold. Let's say, uh, you know when you go on vacation and you go into those stores at the beach that have the seashells and the towels and the this and that they all oh, say yeah, the different right. places it was a souvenir shop uh, but it was it was ran by a bunch of kids that were uh, 17 18 19 years old just out of high school so we used it as a great place to meet people they were there on vacation obviously so we would get invited to a lot of parties at the beach and all that kind of stuff so bad situation we had a lot of fun but bad situation um it may have Good times at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely good times at the moment. Um, so I did that, and that wasn't going anywhere. And one day I got in a car wreck and didn't have a car and was about to have to move back home with my mom and dad. And that wasn't going to be a good situation either. Just, I mean, I had been out of the house for over a year, and so that was going to be weird. So I decided to go into the Army and uh, did four years at Fort Hood, Texas. And that's where I met my wife. And, uh, you know, we got out back in 2001. And we ended up in Jonesboro, Georgia, totally randomly. Her brother was in the military at Fort McPherson right here on 166. And uh, we said, we're coming to Atlanta and just find us an apartment. And, you know, I look back now and I think that it had to be God's um, work. It had to be God's timing and God's just being in charge of everything to align us. We moved right down the road here, like at Mount Zion, um, Battle Creek, not Battle Creek Apartments. What was it called? Uh, Man, I can't think of the name of it now, but it was right down the road. Oh, um, we get things. Yeah. My car got stolen there, so yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, but, so we lived down there for a little bit, and then uh, Heather's brother, the one that got us the apartment, moved back to Illinois, and so then here we were. Like we're in Illinois, we're in we're in Atlanta, and uh, Heather got a job, and I was just kind of doing nothing. Worked for a roofing company, worked for Circuit City. If you know, you guys remember what that is, and uh, and, then, and all that was just kind of happening. And then uh, one day, uh, somebody at church, you know, asked me about um, calling and stuff like that and what I felt. And I had felt like God was allowing me to do some things. And so I started pursuing that, went back to school, got a bachelor's degree. And in God's timing again, um, ended up being the youth pastor here at Mount Zion, children's pastor, back to youth pastor. What would you call me the last time? Uh, associate pastor and now lead pastor. And so uh, that's just a quick synopsis of the last 20 years. Uh, but I do think it was all God's time. And for me to meet my wife, she's from Illinois. We met here in 
uh, in, a, in, in Texas is where we yeah, were stationed. So a girl from Illinois, a dude from Florida meet in Texas and end up in Atlanta. So I always think that that had to be God's perfect timing. Well, it's and, kind uh, of like something like a Jeff Foxworthy joke. <laughs> so a guy from Florida and a girl from Illinois yeah. meet in Texas. Yeah, you see where I'm going. No, I'm not following you. Yeah, so here we are, and uh, you know, God has been faithful through it all. We have two kids now, uh, both go to Eagles Landing Christian Academy. My wife is a dietitian, been there working at her place of employment for like 12 years, and um, we're just trying to do what God called us to do. And opportunities like this for a podcast or uh, just preaching or being involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes, all those things are just different ways that God has used us and just continuing to teach me um, what it looks like to be a disciple and a servant because it looks different for all of us, you know. So you're originally from here? Georgia. From Georgia. And just to add to that, I was going to tell you a few weeks ago, and he's, he's kind of hard to nail down sometimes. He's just, he's wide open. <laughs> Even on the phone, there's days, you know, I'm like that. They're like, bye. I mean, you hang up, you got to bye. The phone's gone. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, you're doing a great job. I appreciate that. It's coming from, I guess, the lower levels in the church building. Of course, up yeah. To, up to the spare tip now. I think mm -hmm. you've done a great job. And during some of the meetings we've had, and I told Haley, I said, Russell's really being, being molded. And doing a great job at yeah. it. I think one thing is not stop caring about what people mm -hmm. say or think, mm -hmm. but it, you just take it in and you make a note of it and you just implement it. Yeah. It's like, I hear what you're saying, but this is the direction that we need to take. Right. And we'll take it as. Yeah. I think you're fantastic. Thank you. Job. It's been, uh, and I will say, I never, I'm not saying that to butter him he, up. We're, we're pretty he's trying to get a raise forward. for our podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a raise for a check I don't get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would never have chosen, I, I've shared this but with a lot of people, but I would have never have chosen to be the lead pastor. You know, we always preach and talk to people about uh, God can do more with you than you ever thought you could do on your own. And when he calls you to do something like be the lead pastor or uh, you know, even be the youth pastor or go do children's ministry. I, in all those situations, I was thinking, surely not me. You know, surely not me. as a children's director. Come on, God. Yeah, yeah, that might have been a different one. But uh, you're right. God has been faithful through it all. And just watching. And, and you're right. I started at the lowest you can start mm -hmm. at Mount Zion. I mean, I started, me and Chad Autry started cleaning toilets back in 2000. Six seven when the academy was still here, mm -hmm. and so we would clean at night and and do all these things. And so I've seen every nook and cranny of this place. And uh, God has allowed me to see so from the janitorial to the children's ministry to youth ministry to associate pastor. I've kind of just went up the get to see the ladder. Awesome. I see everything. Awesome. Yeah. So it's been pretty cool to see, and and this is just another step in that process. Well, my story is I was born and raised right here in Georgia. Born in Loganville, 1977. We were there, well, I was there till about three. Mm -hmm. Parents, of course. And then I basically was raised in Lyconia. Okay. My dad took me and his parents lived in Lyconia and basically been around the area so long, heard Lyconia to the Reagan's. <laughs> It's just that's where good or the bad. Is. It was good. Okay, good. Okay. It's just the name is kind of attached to. Like, wasn't an infamous know. name. Yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't because it was bad. It was just my grandpa lived there. Okay. My aunts and uncles lived there, and I had some aunts and uncles that lived in. I think it was Dallas, okay. Texas, out there. He was he was a very godly man. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother was a godly woman. She read the. When she didn't go to church, which is Rockland Church on Klondike Road, it's still there to this day. Okay. Uh, Methodist Church. But she would read the upper rooms. Oh, yeah. She could get. Mm -hmm. She would read the upper rooms. Mm -hmm. My dad was actually buried in that church, first marriage. But uh, lived in Lithonia, I guess, from three to about 16. Okay. 
going to Perpican, Perpican School, went to Salem Junior High, and one year at Lycone High. You talk about being out of place. <laughs> Lycone is predominantly all black. Okay. And I was a white kid going to high school. So at 16, we moved to Henry County. Okay. Where you and I actually grew up. Mm hmm. So from 16 to 44, I was in that okay. top ridge area. And it was over time, lots of partying. Mm hmm. Smoke the dope, drink the drink, did the <laughs> rock and roll. And of course. Everything that went along with all of that. Uh huh. And then, but there was always something there. I always felt just a little out of place during all that. Mm -hmm. There was by no means that I ever think I would ever stop that. Right. Uh, but there was always something there. Like, it's gotten to know more and more people. And um, I didn't really get into the heavy drugs. Probably the heaviest thing I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the, the pimps or the mm -hmm. like. I said I was always like the heavy, really good, <laughs> yeah. just pot and pills, you know. Expanding your mind, man. Yeah, <laughs> the more it expanded, the dumber I got. <laughs> yeah. Graduated, stopped Ridge High School in '96. Never looked back. Did I didn't even really care to go. But I got to the point where I didn't even. I was going to ask, what was the student mic like? Any social. Okay. To our own little group. Uh huh. Well, when we grew up, our music was this is what we listened to. Mm -hmm. There was none of the crossing genres like it is now. Right. Country into the rap and rap into rock. With right. Now that yeah. wasn't existing. Right. Then. Uh, we didn't hate it. What when you're thing, did. yeah, uh, yeah, just any social, any care, don't drive, snarky. <clears throat> That's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. Be nice. <laughs> and graduated in '96, and my first job, okay. And I did that just because I knew how to during the summer school. He had a family friend. He did plumbing, so I would just do it. Help him out. And so I just did plumbing just because I knew how to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't stop the plumbing. Uh, I think about 25, almost everything just almost stopped. So about five years after I graduated, I did nothing but party. Didn't plan anything. Day by day, of course, yeah. Wake up, you know, good hangover and all over again. And then you got married young, and I was just all right. Well, I said I'd do it. Mm -hmm. It's just I didn't have any idea what you were doing. Just yeah, just sex. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. But that didn't pan out. Big surprise there. <laughs> uh, then along twenty six, twenty seven. I guess that's about the time. I guess the male mind starts to develop oh. and mature. <laughs> yeah, of course. In the late 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, made some bad decisions. Went to jail a few times. Paid for all of that. Finally just made that one decision. It just finally just caught up to me. Uh, around 32, I'd already been, for some reason, the Lord blessed me with my own company. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand his thoughts, right? Right. The way, the way he thinks. But around thirty-two, I I finally just had enough. Life got to me, and just too many bad decisions. And I, I said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do anymore. Like he just looked down and goes, "Good, mm -hmm. waiting on you." <laughs> so thirty-two, I finally accepted the savior. What needs him? Yeah. With that first six months, it was really, really hard. Mm -hmm. There's a reason Jesus told Nicodemus, born again. Mm. You have to learn to live all over again when you're 32. Yeah. Live this life so long. Mm -hmm. 
That's how you live life. Well, all of a sudden, Jesus like, no, this is how you're going to live. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. If you're going to follow me, you're going to live this way. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what I think is really hard with people with information. They have to learn to live all over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what age you are. It's probably easier if you're in the church all the time and you see it all the time. Right. You know the, the routine. Probably not as hard. Mm -hmm. But I think you and, you and I both came from... From secular background. From not, yes, of course. And then it's like, okay, and then... And you're living in the world now. You're going to live in the kingdom. It's like, man, do I need to like shave and <laughs> take a shower? It's like, no. Yeah. Um, so at 32, I got saved. 2009, Haley, uh, we met. Okay. And we actually met over the internet. Um, met over the internet, and the first time we went out. That was it. Mm -hmm. but to me, it was a, a different kind of a date. Because I wasn't in it to have sex. But then it just grew and grew and grew. And we actually went to Panama City with some friends the first year we were together. And it, we got together and we, we never mm -hmm. were apart since. And and in 2012, which we just celebrated saw nine years, on Wednesday mm -hmm. was nine years of marriage. Mm -hmm. We have a Levi, our son, five. Mm -hmm. Something I actually shared last morning. It was Wednesday when we got the news. Uh, you know, it was it was sad news, but relief at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Levi's like, can we pray? Oh wow. I was like, yeah, we'll pray <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. So it was just there, and then just like with you, here we are. Mm -hmm. And I just started off believing that Jesus was who he was, and mm -hmm. I mainly did it to get me out of where I was at. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was going to lead into a lifelong decision to change life. And, and the company that he gave me, and the, the customer base I have, those people need Jesus because yeah. they're yeah. so they're so secular. They're it's all about money and power and fame. And I'm like, a lot of times when I'm out there doing my work on, at these studios and stuff, feel the what is it? The harvest is ripe. The workers. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Mike is a mobile mechanic. He has contracts with the, the movie industry. And so he's always out and about with uh, the world, like the, the world, the real world, the world. Not what you see on TV. Yeah. yeah before they pretty it all up, it's the people yeah, that make all that. Make them look so like when he says true. that the people he's around need Jesus, just because he's around the people that are, I mean, chasing money, chasing yeah. fame, and chasing stuff. And I'm saying star. they're bad people. Right. Just, yeah. just their viewpoint is different from yeah, it's a different, biblical view. It's the, it's the worldview just different from a biblical yeah. worldview, yeah. So from there, and like you, I actually, the good, the guy that didn't want to go to school, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. Same as you. Mm -hmm. I haven't graduated. Mm -hmm. But then started teaching class. I guess he just gave me that gift and back, and here we are. Mm -hmm. Grow, grow, grow. Now I'm sitting here with the pastor of the church doing a <laughs> podcast telling people about Christ. Hey, and he won't he do it? You know what they say? The uh, so you were born again. In what year did you say? In se no, you were born in '77. That's when I was. When you were born again? What year did you say you were born uh, again? I was 32, so 44. Okay. 12. Yeah. Twelve years ago. Yeah. Okay. So I was two thousand four, um, and I I didn't have that mind blowing experience that people like. Well, I was in the shower yeah. and I accepted it, and I was doing this, and I was like, dude, I, I can't. Right. <laughs> yeah. I remember where I was at. I was actually here at Mount Zion. I was telling the story last week when I was preaching. I don't remember what. I wish I could go back and find Pastor Chris's sermon. To know what did he say that day? What did the Holy Spirit say through him that day that made me like, okay, this is the day. Yeah. Like, we have to go forward. Now. I know there was a time in Heather and our life. When we, so we moved to Atlanta in 2001. Uh, we have some friends on the north side of Atlanta that we used to party hard with. Like, it was 
that's what we did. I mean, we were all out. And so I can remember when we first started going to church in general, just we're going to go to church, uh, losing those friends. And not like they said, oh, you go to church now, we're not hanging out anymore. But it was just like, that, you can't be in that and in this. You know, it's like you, you I, started, I started seeing the difference of you can't be all in that like we were and, and live a life that's honoring to God. And it was difficult. And I think it's still something I process through now because those people that I was friends with, I think we're still, you would say, friends. Uh, well, they know, if I called them, we could talk and chat. One of the guys I grew up with in high school, so we would definitely catch up. But it's just different because I think that they would see the Jesus life as something different. Like, uh, I don't think that they would be all on board with surrendering it all and let God work it all out there, very much in the world and of it. And so good people. But it was just a, when God when God changes you like that, he starts changing, like you said, the people he surrounded you with, the circumstances he surrounded you with were new and different. And so that was that was a learning thing in 2004, um, going from just hanging out and now all of a sudden I'm in this. What helped me uh, was at Mount Zion, they had a really good softball team and I grew up an athlete. And so it was like a natural transition. Me and my brother started going to church here with, with Heather and uh, they had a softball team and we jumped on the team and we were decent players. And so it was like we were uh, uh, immediately accepted into the group of brothers. Cause we could, Man, cause we, we might could, have a chance to win. <laughs> we could play, because we could play softball. Uh, but I'm telling you, man, we won a lot of softball trophies uh, at Mount Zion here and made a lot of really good Speaking friends. Speaking of that, yeah. Bill would clear asses this morning uh -huh. when softball was going to be started. Really? And Terry was well, like, are you going to play? He goes, well, I might. <laughs> It's like, well, if you're asking, that tells me you want to play. You want to play. Uh, true story. We tried to have a softball team again two years ago, and uh, it yeah. just, we had some people that, I think what they thought about about playing baseball was some memory they had from a video game or something, because when we got onto the field, it was a little different. It was fun. Lost, it was sorry, brotherhood. It was brotherhood, and we were hanging out, but we didn't win many games. I think we might have won one game, but... And so that's how that that is really how I got plugged into Mount Zion was through softball, and um, just seeing I guess God working on that in that team and those players and those people because a lot of those guys were deacons, uh, Sunday school teachers, uh, servants here at the church, and so I would watch them the way they played softball and the way they uh, the camaraderie they had with the other team it was in like a godly way that I'd never seen before. I'm a trash talker by nature. That's just I talk trash when it comes to sports and. Talking trash in a godly way was something new to me, um, and so me and my brother many times got—I I won't speak—I uh, won't say anything bad about him—but he may have got thrown out of a couple of games <laughs> because we didn't handle it so well. And he but, did, or he did. <laughs> one time was defending me, so hey, I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> uh, someone slid into me a little too hard, but that was just one of those ways that God used uh, to something I enjoyed, and this church had. And he brought us together. And then from that point forward, it was like, for some reason, I can't explain the things of God, but this place has always felt like just home. You know, it's like these people that I would never have known before in my life. Now, all of a sudden, we're living life together. We're, we're here every Sunday. We're here on Wednesdays. We're serving in the community. And it's just something that only, that only God I, does. I thought the same thing, because this was the first church I really got plugged into when we joined it. Yeah, but part in it mm -hmm. spreading the word. I was like, you know, no matter where we go in, one day we'll be called to go mm -hmm. to other places. I said, this is going to be home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always will. Even if, you know, it all gets torn down, I was like, you know, this was home. <laughs> this was like sacred ground, like you said. Of course. Of course. So this was, this was, and it's not really the building, but it's people like mm -hmm. what we're doing here and because mm -hmm. there's not there's not a whole lot going on with uh with the congregation they're just going to sit down together and just hang out yeah there's not a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know two that will do that mm -hmm. one of them is right mm -hmm. that's i think the church has really lost its its integrity five and People don't come to come to the church building anymore to receive uh, salvation. Mm. It, it's like a free meal ticket, mm. just like they saw Jesus. Because mm. I'm sure I'm not here when stuff uh, people come up off there. I've mm -hmm. heard the stories. Hey, we ain't got no food. We ain't got no place to stay. Yeah. You probably run into that more 
the congregation lending a hand to do anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I, saying that this church is bad. It's the church has lost its. its I think it's the church in in all, like the, yeah, the, the, the global all, church. It's just the yeah. mindset of people, and it's just a. I think what, and I think that's what influences you and I, and motivates you and I, um, to get the word out there. Because I think you and I are very real people. We're we're just regular regular Joes. Like we, we I never in the church. I never esteemed yeah. to be a pastor. You didn't esteem to be a Sunday school teacher. We weren't ever trying to be this thing. But we I think went, we were called to go. And you can read all through Scripture of God taking people that weren't necessarily the, the the dream chasers that were the ones that wanted to do it. And He uses regular people. In my world, seeing what God does in regular people is way more meaningful than that guy that wants to always want to be in the front and all and, that and stuff. And a lot of people in the Bible didn't want to do it. That's right. They they never thought of themselves. Moses those. was like God's like Moses. You gonna go back in your free month? No, you need to go over what, there. To got the this country. reason. I got that reason. He, yeah. yeah, he was I rattling can't them off. Talk good. I'm not this. He goes. I got that lined up. You yeah. just need to go back. Yeah. You know, Saul, the first king of Israel, he didn't want to be king. Mm -hmm. That was a bad call on it. <laughs> God said, "Y'all want a king he here? Want, yeah. I'll give you this uh, Jonah. one." Jonah. Yeah. Jonah run. Yeah. He said, "No, I ain't going to this bunch of scumbags over in Nineveh." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, all through the Bible, there was just ordinary people that, like in the movies, like in the backwaters of Galilee, yeah. here comes the Savior of the world. That's right. That's right. Saying that nothing good comes from Nazareth. You know, yeah. these things. So. Nicodemus is like, hey, don't don't we have rules against this? Aren't you from Nazareth? Why don't you go check it out? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what fighting words in that day. Oh, yeah. Are you from Nazareth? Yeah. yeah. And you're a Samaritan. We we talked about that in John 8. Yeah. You're a Samaritan. What is it with Jews and Samaritans? Yeah, man. They were, they were some upper echelon type people. So, Mike, what would you, you, what would you say is your uh, scripture that for this podcast, is there one that, that is kind of like the focal that you think that? One that I've was picking out as we were setting up and I was watching you put it on the computer there mm -hmm. was uh, the Great Commission. To mm -hmm. me, it mm -hmm. stands out a lot because a lot of people will ask, well, where do I fit in with this? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm saved now. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of times I'll read out of the Holman Study Bible and then I got turned on to the Amplified Bible and I'm going to read that version. Mm -hmm. for, what do you use, this is the ESV. This ESV. is the ESV because I had to, you know, my vision started getting bad in my old age, and this is the large print I had to get. <laughs> so yeah, it's the I, ESV. I call it the blind man Bible. That was blind. Yeah, I can't see that. <laughs> I call it the blind man Bible. But I'm going to read it. It's Matthew 28, mm -hmm. and it's at the end of 28. Jesus is standing on the hill. Mm -hmm. He's done, he's been resurrected, and he's been back for his 40 days. Given many convincing proofs that he's alive. And basically, people are like, well, what do I do? Well, this is what you do after you get saved. And I'm going to read verse uh, 18 in chapter 28. It says, Jesus came up to them and said to them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And again, I'm reading that Amplified Bible, so it's going to have more words in it. Verse 19, go therefore make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you and love. I am with you always, remaining with you, regardless of circumstances, and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. And the last one, and the one that I like to go along with that is Romans 18. I am unashamed of the gospel, mm -hmm. for it is the power of God to bring salvation to the Jews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that verse you just read, and I think what is the, power, the most powerful, okay, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Those are the instructions, baptizing them and help them learn all these things that if you don't skip over verse 18, and Jesus came to them and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Um, it's just amazing to think we were we were talking as a staff a couple of weeks back, and to think that uh, Jesus, the scripture says that we studied in John, said that uh, he he was with God from the beginning, and the beginning was the you know he was there from the beginning of everything, and he's been given this authority from God over every bit of creation, and then and what he has done in return is. All authority in heaven has been given to me, and with that authority, with that power, I'm passing it along to you. And so to think that everywhere you and I go, that Jesus, wherever we go, he has authority on. It doesn't matter if it's a good place, a bad place, a sinful place, a holy place. Jesus has the ultimate authority over that. And so uh, as we're studying the book of Joshua and talking about be strong and courageous, have no fear. As Christians, go make disciples, baptize them, going out into our communities where we may not be the uh, predominant skin color. We may not be the predominant uh, socioeconomic, enough money, all these things. Don't worry, Everywhere don't we go, yeah. Jesus has authority. And that's just a, that's a pretty cool thing to me to think about. There's really no reason for a Christian to not go into every situation just with boldness because everywhere you go, Jesus has authority on Yeah, yeah and to add to it also, I can't think of it right offhand, what Wilkinson, Paul says it's like the body. So not every body part is going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So like you said, service, servitude is in different forms, mm -hmm. whether it's a janitor mm -hmm. at the church building mm -hmm. or up front in the pulpit Sunday. Mm -hmm. We can all serve. I serve out in the field. I, I tell them stories all the time. People, they will just come up to me or before they know it, they're yeah. telling me their life story. <laughs> and he goes, I don't even know why I'm telling you. It's like, well, you keep telling me. <laughs> Yeah. Because I have something to tell you when you get done. Right, right. And it's not me. It's not they're drawn to me like they said about Jesus. There was nothing about us to draw us to him or be focused on him. Mm -hmm. We run to him. We're yeah, of course. Something about him. Something that says, I will draw all men to him. Mm -hmm. Whether you accept him or not, you will say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to accept Jesus just to see him. Right. You're going to see him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and it's in those situations when they're talking to you and you're you're not like lording over them, as the Bible calls it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just talking to you. Yeah. What we're doing right now, the way that you and I are talking, I've talked to, I've talked to some very high ranking people from industry. I didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. They were. Mm -hmm. I talked to them, answered them just like I would the guy that's got the truck out in the parking lot that I'm working on so he can get up and run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say, we're all the same, we're all under the same sky, we're all here trying to make money. Yeah. Now, if this was the 25 year old Mike, they wouldn't even let me in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here I am, the place. Taking me and, mm -hmm. and you also, mm -hmm. and you never saw. Of course, of course, yeah. Places I'll take anything you'll do. Yeah, we were talking this morning, and you and I talked about it last Wednesday night. But the story of well, two Wednesday nights ago, it was the story of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. and we said there were certain things that the way Jesus handled his approach to her, and the way Jesus communicated with her, and the ways that we can relate that back to. Okay, if we're going to live out this gospel that we believe. How do we do that? And it was just uh, the the number one thing I think was uh, Jesus spoke to her with respect, mm -hmm. like the very, very he respected her, even though she was a Samaritan woman, someone that the Jewish leadership considered to be defiled and less than, uh, making her go get the water in the middle of the day when the sun was bearing down, not early in the morning, not in the evenings with everyone else, because she had three or four husbands before she was not married to the person she was with then. So the first thing Jesus talked to her with respect. He let her know, and I think this is what you and I uh, are, all of us are called to do, to make sure the people that are around us know that your past doesn't matter. You know, your past is the past. You can't dwell on it. Jesus said he came to make all things new. Uh, the scripture would say, behold, you know, old things are washed away, and behold, here's he the used new. The word new. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so. Yeah, I tell my friends, I said, that I mm -hmm. try to go back and reach some of your friends. That you oh, yeah, with. yeah. I'm not concerned about your past. Yeah. I'm concerned about your future. Yeah. We, we all have a path. And uh, the cool thing is, 
that Jesus said, I'm respecting you by talking to you. I don't care about your past. Uh, I'm still, I still love you. Mm-hmm. Um, it said that he um, not only respected her and, and didn't care about her past, but he shared uh, like deep spiritual truths with her. Mm-hmm. And so he, he considered her valuable enough to say, this is the way. Like God mm-hmm. is the way you, even though you're messed up, even though your life is all these things, you can be redeemed and, and forgiven. And so um, that's, that's where we are. We are at a place where you have a lot of opportunities out in the field of speaking mm-hmm. to people. So respecting them, listening to them, letting them know their path doesn't matter. And, and Jesus is the way. And then here, then it's up to And you. then you say, tag, you're it. You tag, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Um, but it's just all a part of this process of watching God work. The, the scripture that I love the most, and I'm just caught up on it for the last month, it feels like this, because we're doing John, but uh, the John 3.30 scripture, he must increase and I must decrease. Mm-hmm. It just keeps playing over in my mind um as a man as a person i guess guys we like to have a lot of answers we like to make sure we're leading our family and uh we have that if someone comes up to us and gives us a problem we want to give them a solution um and this is the solution he must increase and i must decrease that it looks different and for a lot of different people but that is the solution sometimes it's hard to figure out how to do that yeah he's like man i want you to raise up and be leaders Mm -hmm. But I want to leave. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> you want me to run my household, but you want me to answer to you. That's right. Yeah. I had to explain it. Well, I wrote it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then it gets to, okay, you wrote it down. Now I got to read it. And yeah. as a non-reader, other than anything but scripture, it's a, it's a definite, um, practice I have to make myself do. I don't have to read it to study it. I'm probably not going to read it. Um, but, so, I, but I have found out the more I get into this, the more I will. Oh, now this is good reading. I mean, all, I can, all yeah. like even study books and stuff. Yeah. Along yeah. Yeah. The more then, you get you know, into there it. There are some things that I've had to read for school. I'm like, <laughs> not reading this I again. can't understand this. <laughs> yeah. Um, we all know this scripture, and I think as a not crap as in bad, as a nonsense. <laughs> uh, John three sixteen is obviously the most popular verse in the Bible. Even non-believers, everyone's heard it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Is the focus of our lives. I think that's what we want people to know: that God so loved the world that He gave Jesus. That if you believe. You have eternal life. And that's the point we want to get across. And then when we are able to experience that with people um, and see that joy that they have from us sharing the gospel with them or us living a godly life in front of them, um, that's where we get our, you know, like joy and motivation from. That's that's the call is to tell people that. 17 is just. Oh, I just love it. Yeah. As important, if not, I'll let you. Yeah. Uh, 17 is, yeah, I agree with you because we'll stop at 16 a lot of the time. And that's it. And then people feel shame and guilt because, they're like, well, my life doesn't match up to that. You know, I'm jacked. And it says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So he didn't die so that we would feel shame and guilt and be condemned. Yeah. That he's like, I died so that you can get rid of that sin and feel joy and freedom and a, and a peace that only I can bring. And so... If this is just one little part of what we can do, then that's that's really our motivation for doing this. And, and another thing I keep in mind of myself, because I tell the guys in class, really um, try to drive the home with that. Hard to get people mm-hmm. also, is it's not about saving the masses. Oh, yeah. Always, a lot of the parables in Luke, it helps. Yeah, Famous, it was about the one corn, one sheep, one son. Mm-hmm. The par- prodigal of the son is actually about two, but it's focused on one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You start off with one. Yeah. It's a, it's a personal relationship, not a group relationship. Mm-hmm. It's just a personal choice. Everybody has to make it a, always about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that in the professional sports game. But whether it's you know 150 or one, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if you have 150 kids there and only one 
accepts him, your job is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if there's one kid and that one accepts him, your job is done. Yeah. And I guess because this podcast and what we're doing this for is to show the realness of like trying to live the God life. So I'll, I'll speak to that. When me and me and Haley were, uh, and I think it's in any ministry context, you want to have numbers, not because you want to have not, not to say like we had 200, we had this, but it makes you you feel like you're doing a good job as a leader when the, when the numbers. Yeah, are, you still want yeah. the pat on the back, mm -hmm. man. That was good. Yeah. The fist pumps. And, and you just want, because you want to feel like you're doing something that's making a difference. That what you're saying is the really gospel, really God truth. The gospel. Is if one person is there and they get it and it changes their life, then it was worth it. And that's where it becomes, he must increase, I must decrease, because I'm the one that wants the numbers. Yeah. He just wants the one soul to be turned back. If God said, you know, you, I might talk to 10 people in a month that have no idea about Christ mm -hmm. or the gospel other than saying GD all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, one, just one of those 10, or let's just go out on a limb and say one of those 20 people mm -hmm. might give a hint. Mm -hmm. Just one. Yeah, that's right. Like, what are you going to do? It says, well, if they don't accept it, walk to the edge of town. <laughs> head on down dust to the a, next head, one. Dust, a, dust yeah, off your just, sandals and keep moving. Yeah, dust on and head on down the road to the yeah. next. So I said this morning, God doesn't, he doesn't make you do anything. And so your job, your call, go therefore and make disciples. Um, that's the call. Now you go, you try to teach, you try to lead. They don't accept that's on them. Mm -hmm. We are all one on one accountable to God. Not to and choose. That, not to choose is definitely a choice. Yes, mm -hmm. I like that. Um, and so, what we're called to do is be obedient to to go after them and to live lives that are honoring. And where that leads, who knows? But there was a point in your my my life and your life where neither one of us knew this was the spot. That we just knew some, God was saying something. So let's try. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go see what it is. And then before you know it, God works and works and works in here. Now, we could have both chosen not to be a part. You know, we could have both heard the gospel back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and, and said, you know what? No, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Or we could have got it and said, yeah, you're right. And I'm just going to hang out in the back of the church. And you guys up front, you guys handle that, all that kind of stuff. I thought it was a pretty good move in the worship center. We removed the back three pews, I think. <laughs> Well, we're going to remove these back three. Well, guess what? You still have a back pew. Yeah. <laughs> you might take all of them out. Those there. people that went from the very back just moved three more yeah, up. Yeah, they just moved three up. All right. There's still a back row. <laughs> they have this uh, back row Baptist thing I've heard about. I didn't grow up Baptist, but I've always heard about back I've row. Heard, I've heard yeah. the same. Yeah, I guess that's, they like to be on the back. So, um, well, what else, Mike, you want to talk about in this opener? It might be about, I think it's good might be it. Well, I don't know. I think let's just. Uh, I think what we wanted this to be is to let you know who we were, what we're doing, and uh, yeah, what we're going to be doing each week is we're studying the Book of John in depth. We're going slow. We just finished up Chapter Four last week, and so what we wanted to do is every night after we go through our Wednesday online worship was to chill out and just break down the scripture that we talked about a little more in depth. Talk about our weeks. And so podcast, maybe 35, 45 minutes to up to an hour of the conversation is good. Um, I don't know if we know where we said we're broadcasting from, but we are in the uh, reclaimed layer of Mount yeah. Zion Baptist Church. So well, let, let's talk about that. Okay. The reclaimed layer. What, where did that name come from? Reclaimed. Well, I'm, I'm a team player. Okay. Even though I don't deal with sports, <laughs> I like the unity in together. Uh -huh. Of course, I had to learn that too. Uh huh. Um, when Mr. Doug basically stepped down from class, mm -hmm. I, I just took over. Uh, and I actually circled back around because I stepped down for a little while so Haley and myself could be in class together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those things where it's like, well, that's not what I asked you mm -hmm. or called you to do. Mm -hmm. So Haley and myself, we, we had to go back to where we were, where we were called to be. Mm -hmm. so when I come back to the class, uh, Needed it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want some easy church name. Of course, you know, of course. A lot of church stuff. It's like, <laughs> you change the name, I'm in. Mean. But you know, yeah. everybody's got their. I get that. I get that. Just, yeah. So I, I was like, got the guys together in the class because we do it all together. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. We actually changed it to life group. Mm -hmm. 
And so we sat down. And I was like, look, let's come up with a name for our group. Mm -hmm. And that way you kind of, okay, well, this group, instead of, you know, going to Mike's class, well, it's not my class. Right. I just happened to be in here talking. Yeah. Yeah, so we wrote a bunch of names down, and I asked them, and wrote their names down, and then we just kind of narrowed it down. I'm like, what about the school? I'm like, yeah, well, and of course, like, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> okay, you were involved in it. Yeah. So, and I like Reclaimed, because I started seeing when I, I do a lot of mm -hmm. waiting, basically waiting, walking in the water. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, I'll see a lot of driftwood. Okay. Uh -huh. So, and then years ago, this reclaimed barn wood furniture oh, yeah. stuff just exploded on yeah. the scene. Been around forever. TV got a hold of it and blew it up into something that's really not. So I'm thinking we could do that for us because we're made in God's image. We all are. Mm -hmm. And then we choose to either follow him or don't. Most of us don't. We're out in the world. We'll come back. We'll, I'll reclaim you as my mm -hmm. So that's I love it. kind of the route that reclaim. But everybody in here, we're all in the same path. We're all level. We just do different jobs within the kingdom. I'm up here. I just happen to talk and really just sinks in and I really get it and if I don't I'll text somebody or Dr. Google and yeah and uh like I said I got my study Bible here I'll read it. I mean there are some days when I'm doing my lesson um uh, like John eight we actually finished up John eight. Mm -hmm. I can read it and I mean it just it just clicked. I'm like I haven't even made hardly any notes on it. Mm -hmm. But there are some days for instance, you know, John 3, 16 to 17, it's like, I'll study a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But something. I'll bring that attitude in here because I learn just as much in here as I do here. Yeah. Because these guys ask the questions that I can't think of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the if beauty I don't of have being an answer, I was like, well, together. You should research it and get back to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. So I did ask uh, our life groups to come up with a name, you know, like instead of being Mike's class, like he said, it's not Mike's class. Uh, and Reclaimed was one of those cool names that came out of it. We have some other ones. We have uh, Soul Sisters and we have Soul Seekers. And um, one of our women's groups is Real, uh, stands for, it's an acronym for something. But those are all good. Uh, we have our movement student ministries and MZBC Kids on the Go ministries, and so um, it's all just uh, it's all just fancy ways to try to get people to come to come to know Christ. That's all it is. Yeah, and also we did a little different in class. Um, I've kind of abandoned the book mm -hmm. that you know the church provides books. Yeah. Every what, three months. Every quarter, yeah. Every quarter. Yeah. Uh, well, I got to where it was almost mundane to me. I'm not saying that it wasn't important, but it's like, you know, because a lot of those books are written by scholars. Yeah, of course. I was like, we can't understand <laughs> the commentary. Yeah. So I basically just started building my own, and I've been given the, the knowledge to mm -hmm. do a pretty good job of that. I've sent you some of my mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. um, and I completely forgot. Oh. Then it just you know, comes. It, about every, there's four Sundays in a month, typical four Sundays. So we'll study for three Sundays. And then one Sunday of that month, we'll have what we just call an open school. Yeah. So there's no lesson, nothing. We come in here and we sit down and we're doing what we need. Mm -hmm. We just talk. Talking we about share it. about life. Well, this made me happy this, this week. Or mm -hmm. This made me upset. Or this was laid on my heart. Mm -hmm. or whatever like that. We just, like I said, we just live life together and we mm -hmm. feed off of each other. And it's like going through anxiety or I'm on a high streak right now. Right. Whatever it takes. Because you just read out of the book every week. Yeah. You don't get none of that. That's exactly you right. You don't get that connection. Right. I, I didn't want it to become a routine. Right. I right. to become a life. Keep them on their toes in real life. I agree. That's that. I mean, that's part of that making disciples that Jesus was talking about was 
communicating with our people on a real level, uh, not just the, like you say, the, the studies, they're good, but they are written in such a way that, you know, it's kind of, it's got to be such a broad that covers so many people that it's not pinpointed at these specific people in my class. And if I can uh, somehow connect with those people on the intimate level, then we're getting somewhere as, as we grow with Christ. Yeah, so I'm with you. And so I think uh, I think that's a good stopping point for mm -hmm. us on this first one. So um, we, we're from Mount Zion Baptist Church. I don't even know if we said that to start it out. We're just figuring this thing out. So we're so excited. We are. To do Mount this. Zion Baptist Church in Jonesboro, Georgia. Watching it all up. People will probably say, nothing good comes out of Jonesboro, Georgia. Is that in Clayton County? It's right outside the line. <laughs> <laughs> right outside, I think hey man look we're making a difference uh in clayton county we're gonna we're gonna start repping clayton county for the gospel so but i have told a few people about this and showed them the picture that we got yeah you know, send me the link send me the link so i'm Awesome. I'm excited that they yeah, man. To see it. And, so and you guys can go it. subscribe to all your favorite podcast places. Uh, I don't know what they are because I only use Apple Podcasts. But wherever you guys get your podcasts from, we'll be on all those platforms. And like I said, me and Mike will be back once a week uh, breaking down God's Word. How do we live it out? How do we live life together? How do we be the church that God called us to be? That's our goal and that's our focus. So, Mike, I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll get into it next week, my brother. See you guys.